Hey everyone, Dr. Harmon here. I'd like to talk a little bit about peroral rejuvenation or rejuvenation of the area around the mouth. I'd like to start by talking about the anatomy of the mouth and then a little bit about what changes as we get older as well as solutions. So the mouth consists of not only the red part of the lips, the upper and lower lips, but also the skin extending from the border of the red lips in the top lip up to the base of the nose and out to what's called the nasolabial folds. And in the lower lip, from the border of the red lip down to the chin and out to what eventually become the marionette lines. As we get older, those nasolabial folds and marionette lines become deeper. And they become deeper because the fat pads in our cheeks and along our jaw start to fall down into the center. And they overhang ligaments at the nasolabial folds and marionette lines. And it's those ligaments that are being hung over on that deepen and impart an age, aged appearance to the face. The best solution to address these is deep plane facelift surgery, specifically the extended deep plane facelift. Deep plane facelift surgery, unlike non-deep plane facelift surgery, can lift the cheeks up and away and relieve some of that overhang from the nasolabial folds. It can also better address the jowls, lifting them up and away, and do it in a longer lasting manner through the release of tension points, not only in the jawline, but in the cheeks. Some place volume in these folds, such as fat or hyaluronic acid filler. And those interventions can soften the appearance of these folds, but they don't actually address what changes as we get older. And if too much is added, then what you can get is an obliteration of the transition between the cheeks and the upper and lower lip. And that can impart a chipmunky or a natural or distorted appearance to the face. The upper and lower lips also lose volume as we get older. And as a result of the loss of volume, you get a lengthening and a thinning of the upper lip and the lower lip, but it's more obvious on the upper lip. And you get a shortening or a loss of height of the red lip and a loss of definition of the upper red lip. You also lose that poutiness or the kind of slight projection of the lips as you get older. And you lose some of the natural tooth show that is obvious when the lips are at rest or in repose in youth. The best solution to these age-related changes in the upper lip is the lip lift, which is a procedure that reduces the length of the skin from the border of the red lip to the base of the nose and can lift the red portion of the lip, improve the contours of the upper lip, that M shape that we have in youth that is often lost when we get older, and can restore some of the pout to the upper lip. Some add volume through filler or fat to the upper lip and lower lip in order to address some of these changes. And adding volume to the lips can be good in conjunction with a lip lift, but only if you've got real deflation of those lips. It isn't a replacement for a lip lift. And in fact, when too much volume is added to the upper lip and no lip lift is performed, you can actually get a greater lengthening or more pendulous lift to the upper lip that provides even more of an age-related change to the upper lip. Now, as I said before, you can add volume to the upper lip and lower lip, and that can be really nice. And filler is one option, and fat is another option. A third option is actually the use of fascia during a facelift, taken from right in front of the ear under the skin, and that can provide a nice controlled and more permanent increase in volume to the upper and lower lip. The last thing I'd like to talk about is the changes that occur to the skin as we get older, and that could be due to a number of factors, not just age, sun, genetics, etc. And what happens is we get wrinkles and they radiate out from the upper and lower lips, and they can be really deep, especially compared to other parts of the face. And so the best procedure to address those changes is a surfacing procedure, and there are three really ways to do that. The first is with a laser, and those lasers include Urbiag and CO2 lasers. We use CO2 lasers in our office. And the second option is a chemical peel, and the chemical peel, uh, there's a wide variety of them, and each has different concentrations and different concentrations of the most effective ingredient. And then the third option is dermabrasion, which utilizes a spinning tipped device that um, allows a surgeon to remove the top layers of skin in a controlled fashion. So I use a CO2 laser for surfacing in this area. And the, like I said before, the deep wrinkles around the mouth can be really, really difficult to treat with any resurfacing procedure. So 
what I do, not only to help with the healing process, but also to help with those deep wrinkles, is use nanofat. And nanofat's harvested in a similar way to fat that would be transferred to the lips or other parts of the face to restore volume, but it's processed differently. It's processed into a very thin liquid. And that thin liquid primarily is used and injected in those really deep wrinkles around the mouth to improve healing because sometimes you need to do deeper peels around the mouth or deeper uh, ablation or surfacing procedures around the mouth in order to address those deeper wrinkles. And then it can also, in some instances, fill in or soften the appearance of those deep wrinkles. So when I'm discussing age-related changes with a patient and discussing ways to address their concerns, I'm thinking about all of these things around the mouth and I'm thinking about the best way to address those changes. There are multiple ways to address the age-related changes to the face I had mentioned, but they're not always most appropriate for certain patients and they may not actually address what changes as we age. So it's important to think about these things comprehensively and to have a very frank conversation with your patient and to explain to them why you're recommending the things you are.